Hello and welcome to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter Lavelle. We've heard it all before. All the options are on the table. And of course, that means use of force. This time, North Korea is in the crosshairs. The usual bellicose language is used and threats are made. What is missing is diplomacy. Cross-talking North Korea. I'm joined by my guest James Bradley in New York. He is a New York Times number one best-selling author. His latest book is The China Mirage. In London, we have Ken O'Keefe. He is a political analyst and ex-U.S. Marine who renounced U.S. citizenship. And here in Moscow, we cross to Mohammed Morandi. He is an associate professor at the University of Tehran. All right, gentlemen, cross-talk rules in effect. That means you can jump in anytime you want, and I always appreciate it. James, let me go to you first in New York. Uh, we had a real flurry of news about North Korea, and we had our Mod is moving around and, you know, all, all, um, all things are on the table. And then we had the President of the United States uh, assemble a uh, 100 senators. I don't think that's happened in a long time, if ever, to talk about North Korea. And then there was a little bit of a whimper here. What's going on here? I mean, is this for domestic consumption here? Because it's about, uh, on an annual basis, the whole North Korean thing flares up and everybody, you know, throws up their arms. Nothing can be done. Uh, conflict is inevitable, which, of course, it's not inevitable. Go ahead, James. I think that Trump got into office, and maybe they showed the military showed the film of the uh, JFK assassination that they have, and Trump turned to the military, put the generals in charge, and they opened the playbook. And the crazy Asian is an old uh, trick in American policy. Theodore Roosevelt called the king of Korea crazy in 1904 and allowed Japan to take Korea over. Japan, with uh, U.S. help, uh, ruled Korea for 45 years. Yeah. Then the crazy guy was, uh, was Mao Zedong, uh, uh, hurting his own people, this crazed dictator. So the, the crazy Asian um, motif works well in America. You know, Ken, you know, the thing is, is that you can say a lot about the, the Korean leader, um, but I wouldn't say he's crazy. As a matter of fact, I think he's actually quite rational because the most important thing for the regime in North Korea is survival. Why would they risk everything? to um, uh, bait the Americans and bait the South Koreans. Because I, I'm not a military man here, but if the North Koreans were to start any kind of military offensive against one of its neighbors, it would, that country would probably be incinerated in a matter of hours. They're not going there, but you, if you read Western media, it looks like we're dealing with a lunatic state, just as James pointed out. Go ahead, Ken. Well, I, I really believe this is more smoke and mirrors than anything else, and I think the timing couldn't be more uh, obvious. This uh, recent false flag event in Syria and Trump's absolute U-turn and ridiculousness, insulting the American people and the world with his beautiful babies and concern for uh, the Syrians, is nothing more than a complete total continuity with the policy of the United States yep. over the last few decades, and that would be to completely destroy the Middle East. Now, when Trump did this, so many of his constituents, those who supported him and got him into office, were outraged. They voted for him in direct opposition to Hillary Clinton because they knew that World War III was a virtual absolute with her, that psychopath extraordinaire criminal with a husband who likes to fly off with Jeffrey Epstein to on the Lolita Express to go do God knows what while he dismisses his Secret Service heading to the U.S. Virgin Islands. So this, uh, this, this thing that's happening with North Korea, I believe, is nothing more than smoke and mirrors to divert from the real policies which are going to be continued because Donald Trump is owned by the very same interests that own the U.S. Congress, and the policies are to continue to destroy the Middle East. Right. I do believe that they're going to head into Syria and go ahead and bring in U.S. troops, and a lot of those U.S. troops who saw what happened with Syria in the last couple of weeks came out and made some amazing YouTube videos and said, what the hell are you doing, yeah. Donald Trump? So for me, and, and aside from that, the United States never fights anybody who can fight back. True. We're cowards. We don't pick on people who can fight back. 
You know, Muhammad, it's very interesting. There's a lot of real dots to connect here, not like in Western media where it's fake dots and fake news, okay? But you have Donald Trump sitting next to the Chinese leader uh, eating chocolate cake, apparently, and he orders uh, the, this uh, attack on Syria with no evidence whatsoever, at least not presented to the public. And a lot of members of the intelligence community that are former uh, members of uh, uh, the CIA and other agencies have written quite publicly that this is a false flag. And then, you know, you, you do this in front of the Chinese leader, then you start this um, bluster with North Korea. But I think, you know, my last dot to connect to all of this, I think this is the whole Korea story is actually the story about the country you come from, Iran. Well, I, I agree that um, uh, there's, there, there are a lot of smoke and mirrors involved here. Uh, the Trump obviously uh, needed to get the mainstream media and the political establishment off his back and uh, the missile strikes against Syria did that at least for for a short term I don't think sure. he's going to get rid of them uh, at mm -hmm. all uh, but um, uh, and obviously for anyone who has been pursuing what's going on in Syria it's clear that the Syrian government didn't carry out the attack the, the media in the West keeps saying the Syrian government attacked just to make people believe but they have no evidence of, of the Syrian government being involved there's no reason for them to be involved they're winning the war uh, but um, in Korea uh, it, it I think the attack on Syria does have something to do with Korea in the sense that perhaps the US government wants to gain concessions from China right uh, but uh, I don't think I think that the United States is making a mistake just as it did in Syria because it antagonized Russia brought Russia and Iran closer to each other it, it, it antagonized China in a way because it was humiliating for the Chinese president to be sitting there when yeah. the attack t took place and I think in Korea there also may, of, of, of course it was good for Trump himself in US politics at least in the short term it made him look strong and presidential you know killing people that's how it is in the United States but uh, in Korea I think uh, this is another mistake because at the end of the day either the United States has to attack Korea right and if it does it will be a, they'll pay a heavy price this is not Iraq that's been under sank that was under sanctions for a decade uh, this is a powerful country or it will back down and it and if they do then it shows that the United States isn't as powerful as it seems to or presents itself and so uh, and therefore the next time the United States makes a threat against another country it won't be that effective with with regards to Iran Iran is far more powerful than Korea it has a much larger population it has allies across the region in Iraq in Syria in the Arabian Peninsula in in Afghanistan Iran is uh, a, a, a powerful country that the United States will have to deal with with respect in future it, there's i don't think that there's any chance for the united states to carry out any sort of military operation against iraq against iran so we'll, we'll see what happens in Korea, but I think that it's basically a lose-lose situation for well, the United States. Yeah, but, 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 uh, but for um, rationally speaking, I mean, if you really want to solve this problem in North Korea, if I go to James in New York here, it, I know this is, uh, people are not going to accept this, but you know, the North Koreans want to sit down to end the war because there's only an armistice, the war has never been ended. They want recognition they want security assurances and they want it from the United States and they would like to see 23,500 American troops leave the peninsula that is destabilizing for the peninsula not it doesn't give it stability it, it, uh, it, it continues this military element and why do we have to have on a yearly basis these massive military maneuvers that threaten the country of North Korea I mean sit down and talk but no there are always preconditions that's why this problem persists go ahead James I agree with you completely. The last U.S. South uh, uh, Korea drill was called decapitation. Wow. So I wonder if you're North Korean, if you would worry about that. <laughs> and, you know, it's just nonsense what the press is reporting. You, to prepare for this, I did something I don't like to do. I bought the New York Times. <laughs> and the headline here is, after, after North Korean artillery drills, defense system takes shape in South. 
In other words, after the madman did something, the U.S. came in to defend South Korea with the THAAD missile system. Right. This is ridiculous. We've been planning this for years. And then paragraph, paragraph, you know, the, the mad uh, Korean dictator. And then, oh my God, you almost get to the end of the article and you read that thousands of South Koreans are out in the streets protesting. Right. What are they protesting? They're not protesting the, uh, the madman in North Korea. They're protesting the mad men in America who are installing a missile system that is roiling the waters. This is where the article should start. So, in you know, the American public doesn't see yep. that we're throwing rocks, breaking the windows, and we only put the camera up when the old man comes out and shakes his fist. Uh, you know, at the front door. But the Americans don't see these exercises, the right. decapitation, the, the simulation of bombing of North right. Korea. I would, I would hold on to my nukes and be afraid of the United States well, if I was a North Korean. Can they address that? And that's, that's the logic here. The more you threaten this country, the more it's going to be defensive. I mean, that, 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 that's human nature. That's on, on, on a, on a human-to-human -human level, but not just country-to-country -country on a global stage. I mean, the, uh, if I were South Korea, I would be make sure I would have as many defensive capabilities as I could to, to deter aggression. Well, Go ahead. Well, if, 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 if Iraq taught the world anything, it is, and Libya, for that matter, giving up its nuclear program, uh, the world has been taught, if you want to avoid the empire's wrath, make sure you arm yourself to the teeth, because disarming yourself is not going to serve any protection at all. Let's also get in, here's where North Korea and Syria and the Middle East, all of it ties in. There is a very big misunderstanding amongst the people of the world who don't have psychopathic, sociopathic uh, qualities. See, for those of us who have any level of humanity, we don't want war. But there's a big problem. Those who are in charge actually have a major incentive to have war. Now, the bankers who run the world, literally by having an infinite supply of money, while us dupes allow ourselves to pay interest <laughs> interest when we could print that money ourselves and let's get to JFK who was going to end that by issuing United States notes as opposed to Federal Reserve notes Ken, Ken, which of course is a private here. bank Ken let me jump in here we're going to go to a short break and after that short break we'll continue our discussion on North Korea and other issues stay with our team Welcome back to Crosstalk, where all things are considered. I'm Peter LaBelle. To remind you, we're discussing North Korea and other issues around the world. Okay, let me go back to Ken here. Two things about crosstalk that people complain about. I have to go to a hard break in the middle, and it's too short. So I cut you off in the first half. Please continue, my friend. You know, what I'm going to say now, I want to make clear, is motivated by a deep love of this beautiful planet and all humanity. And while many of my brothers and sisters in the human family are acting, acting in a completely unacceptable way, what I'm saying is based on love. There is no grudge. I simply want what's best so that we can hand this world over in a better state than we have it now. We are continuing to flirt with a third world war. It seemed that people in World War II realized, especially with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, that we could not do this a third time. But apparently we've been cast under another spell and seem to forget that we do have the capacity to destroy this planet. Now, those of us who have any kind of sanity and humanity realize the dangers of this, but those who are running the world through the control of finance have a major incentive to incite war because more important than the money that they control is the most important parameter of a tyrannical system, a tiny minority, ruling over the masses. And that principle is you will never be able to rule people if you cannot divide them. So you must divide them. What divides people more than anything else? War, mass murder, horrendous crimes, torture, things like that are good in the view of a banker. So the bankers have a major incentive just as a carte blanche reality of where they are. But right now they have an extra added incentive and that incentive is that the consciousness of humanity is rising Amazing. and many of the key principles of the tyr tyrannical system we're dealing with are being exposed. 
closed. And there's an elephant in the room that I'm going to get into after the other guests talk because it's an important elephant that we seem to be ignoring. But the major point that I want to make right now is that those who are in charge of this world have a major incentive to instigate a third world war. And this is where it, I would disagree with my brother Mohammed there in, in Russia if you think that logic and rational behavior and sense is the guide. Because attacking North Korea would be catastrophic, of course. And I used to live in Hawaii. Hawaii may well be incinerated, sure. literally. Sure. Hawaii would be a primary target. And I love my Hawaiian brothers and sisters. And I'll be damned if I'm going to sit by and say nothing that is relevant to that situation because I'm afraid of the consequences. So I'm going to get back to the elephant in the room after okay. the other guests have a chance to talk. But make no mistake, those who are running this world right now have a major incentive for a third world war. Well, you know, one of the interesting things, you mentioned a third world war. You know, Mohammed, it, what I think is interesting is we, we've talked, we, we started out with North Korea, but we've really spread it around with, uh, to uh, Syria. We've talked about Iran, I mean, uh, by um, uh, extension, uh, the hostility the West has, at least the establishment against Russia and, 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 the, and the situation with China. Uh, what I see here, and, 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 and Trump is actually doing the bidding of the establishment, is that they know the, the, the unipolar moment is coming to an end. That window is closing. And I think this is what's cre creating this hyper actions around the world because that the, the ability of the United States to call all the shots all, everywhere all the time is getting thinner and thinner. And I think this is what's getting the establishment worried. And, and that's what, all, you know, what we have now is we have bluster and threats instead of a coherent, rational foreign policy. And you know what? It sells well with the media. Okay, go ahead, Mahan. I agree. I think that um, you know American exceptionalism. When we look at it, many people are beginning to think, well, America in the, in the United States. Ma many people are beginning to think, well, maybe America isn't so exceptional. That's why Trump became so popular when among many people when he said, "Make America great again." So it's 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 very painful, sure, I think, for sure. the political establishment in the United States. This seeing this decline, sort of like similar to the Suez moment for uh, the British Empire earlier on in the in the 20th century. Um, and I agree that it's the, the the political regime in the United States is not rational. It's very much influenced by money, and that's one reason why Trump gave so much extra money to the military because the military wants more money, and in order in order to make more money, there has to be more conflict. So that is a, a major risk. There are two things that though I'd like to point out though here. One is that, uh, in my opinion, this whole uh, North Korea issue is uh, and Thad is more linked to China than yep. it is to North yep. Korea. Yep. And the United States is basically trying to yep. contain China through yep. this excuse. Uh, just like when the United States was making a big issue about Ira Iran's missile defense capability, it was more directly linked to Russia in reality. So they set up this missile defense system in, in Europe, in, in, Europe yep. in, uh, in the name of Iran, whereas uh, it was really for Russia. You know, you know, James, uh, Mohammed brings up a really good point here because these, this bad missile system, it, it's not, you know, I, you, know you read the, the, the fake news mainstream media, you know, it's to protect uh, the people of South Korea, but no, it's directed to China. I mean, the Chinese are the ones that say, why are you putting this on our border here? Okay, they're not uh, acting in a hostile way whatsoever. And again, because of this whole perception in Western media and the exceptionalism in the American political elite, you know, nobody has the right to defend themselves. Nobody, okay? And if you try to defend yourself, you're aggressive. Think about that Orwellian logic. Go ahead, James. It's just ridiculous. No, it is China and Russia. We're back to the, the 1950s, the two big cards the military was able to play. Uh, the army needs Russia for funding and, and the navy needs uh, <laughs> China for funding. And, and uh, seriously, yeah, yeah. there's got to be big threats. We need more ships. We need more guns. I mean, Trump, uh, Trump's uh, people told the senators yesterday, they advised them about the increasing erratic and unlawful behavior from Mr. Kim. Erratic behavior? How about the U.S. Tomahawk m missiles? Unlawful behavior? Congress did, has, has not uh, uh, debated any of this. It's, it's against international law, what we are doing. A crazy man in Poignan. Hey, if that crazy man just looked around at U.S. actions, Vietnam, where I live now, that's three million dead. 
Yeah. There's hundreds of thousands of Agent Orange babies because of American chemical weapons. I support some of these families. Chemical weapons in Vietnam? The uh, Korean War. Look at Japan. Korean has War. Been a, yeah. a, 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 as the Korean War where we incinerated Korea. The, uh, Japan has been an aggressive aircraft carrier for, America, for the American military since uh, 1904 with a little break for World War II. I mean, he's looking ar I'm getting around at a lot of erratic and unlawful U.S. behavior all over Asia. And if we stopped it, uh, the tensions would ratchet down. Y you know, Ken... Another place that we can go to, another place go we can go to is Iran, which I'm heading back to again. There's 100,000 victims in Iran from the chemical weapons that Saddam Hussein used with the aid of the CIA. This is a matter of public record. Let's yep. Let us remember how he was our favorite little attack dog in the Middle East and that we had to attack Iran for having the audacity of getting rid of our puppet, the Shah. And the Iranians, all too ironically, while being told, the whole West being told that these are the evil people who want to exterminate the Jews and all this kind of nonsense, the Iranians had an amazing debate within their nation uh, back in the 80s when they were being attacked by weapons of mass destruction from Saddam Hussein and chemical weapons, and there was a debate about whether they should even attack uh, Basra and Baghdad with weapons of mass destruction. And you know what their answer was? No, we can't because we're a God-fearing nation and it would be immoral and God would not approve. So this is yet another example, 100,000 victims of chemical weapons in Iran. So yeah, America's moral authority hasn't existed for decades. And I have been shocked that even back in 2003 that people were talking about weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Excuse me, the United States is the biggest producer, distributor, and user of weapons of mass destruction, and it's going to be the moral authority to talk about who can and can't have them? It was absurd then. It's even more absurd now. You know, Mohammed, one of the greatest compliments I've ever been given about this program and guests like yourself is that it was two, two things. It's very fact-driven, and the fact that I always, and, and I, it, for me it's a part of my core element, is I always refer back to international law because that is what should be applied to everyone. And international law is not exceptional. It, that why, that's why we have it, and we have a, a fair playing field here. James was talking talking about you know, the lack of, of the institution of international law, the United States attacking Syria, countless number of attacks around the world outside international law, but no one in mainstream media ever mentions that fact. That is so important to understand that, that international law is the only thing that we have keeping us from going to the Third World War. Go ahead, Mohammed. Yes, and that's despite the fact that international law is rigged in favor of the United sure. States. The, the world body is the UN. It, the five seats out of the, uh, of the five permanent members, three of them are a part of NATO. So, but despite all the fact that the laws uh, work to their benefit, they don't even tolerate that anymore, especially after uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Iraq War and Afghanistan and so on. But uh, I think the, the, the real problem that exists today is, what, is how the United States justifies what it does and how the mainstream media and think tanks justify it. And that is this binary of good versus evil. In North Korea, they present it as an erratic, dangerous regime, and so international law becomes meaningless. They, uh, so uh, they can do whatever they like. In reality, though, and I know many people would not like this if, when I say it, but in reality, Obama is more evil than the Korean pre regime because he's killed Absolutely. many more people through drone strikes, Absolutely. through supporting Saudi Arabia, through destroying Syria, Libya, creating mass starvation in Yemen, right. the, one of the unique crimes right. of contemporary history. And we have silence in the mainstream media. We have silence 60 in the billion dollar. Go ahead, Ken, 60 jump billion in. Dollar, six, 60 billion dollars weapons to Saudi Arabia, the most grotesque nation on the planet. Women have zero rights. Again, I say, how is it possible that the United States can talk about its concern for women and selling $60 billion worth of weapons to Saudi Arabia, in which women aren't even considered humans, quite frankly. Now, They're not allowed to go out oh, alone. And, and they now, can't drive. They don't The Saudis vote. have been elected to the but UN they, Commission for Women's <laughs> Rights. Okay.
Just yeah. like they were elected okay. early on. I, that's in the probably the most Orwellian ending of Crosstalk of all time. We've run out of time, gentlemen. Many thanks to my guests in New York, London, and here in Moscow. And thanks to our viewers for watching us here at RT. See you next time. And remember, Crosstalk rules. I love it.